Ooh. Ooh. I got a lot of oils in my face. I look like a shiny Negro. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Beast of the Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. Not a lot of stuff going on in the news, but something that I've been seeing in the news that's really irking me is this. That button. What button is that at the very bottom there? What is that? Not the one here by my thumb, but this, this one over here. I can't tell. That blue. The blue one. What do you call it? Write in the comments below what you call that. There's news. Like, every news outlet, because the new gaming news is so slow, I guess it's official. They call this the cross button. Because it's shaped like an X. If you turned it, then maybe it would be a cross. But it's actually positioned like an X. So the official names of these four main buttons are triangle, circle, square, and cross. You can cross that out because I'll never call it a cross. It's an X. But yeah, that's the news that doesn't matter. The news that does matter to me because I'm a, I'm a portable gaming nerd, I guess. You know, I always claim that trope, that name. Uh, because growing up and, and, you know, in my early 20s, I wanted every portable console, Nintendo DS, I wanted it all, PSP, and I ended up collecting everything, and now, you know, once you hit 40, you just don't have time anymore. I mean, I remember when I was 30 years old, I used to walk around like Flavor Flav, I had a PSP on a, on a long lanyard around my neck, I'm saying grocery shopping, I didn't give a damn what people thought about me, I'm a gamer, you know what I'm saying, and a lot of people, dug, they dug it too, even if they didn't tell me old 60 year old lady the cashier she dug it but she didn't say anything so somebody made something really awesome uh somebody somebody on the i guess in the modding scene uh created a portable super nintendo now all transparency my favorite portable probably of all time is not the nintendo switch it's probably the psp i think the back of it fell off yeah but this is a PSP I haven't played in a long time uh, and the reason that the PSP is probably my favorite is because it was the most versatile for its time uh, it had in the early 2000s it was modded like insane so you could play any console on it put a whole video game library on it and just just bug out playing just classics new stuff new software it all worked and I know Kate and I we just got down playing it so probably of all time the greatest console for me is PSP. But a close second will be the Nintendo Switch. And the reason that the Nintendo Switch is so great to me is because, well, there are myriad reasons. You can play console quality games on it that don't, they, they don't match pixel for pixel the console versions, but they are great representations you can play in your car. Uh, they have incredible eShop sales every week. I mean, where can you go and buy a game for 19 cents? Every time I see one, I wouldn't care if it was the same game every week. I'm buying that game. So I've got a huge library on it. I've probably got 15, you know, full price exclusives and things like that on it. But I've got tons of, you know, seven, eight, nine dollar games that you, you see in the eShop. You're like, wow, it's normally $30. I'm going to buy that. They have great deals and it helps you, you know, build an expensive library. That's really awesome. Um, I got some old stuff. I got, you know, my Game Boy Advance Micro, which is a tiny, I mean, look at my hand. It's tiny. This is like, you know, you could do a card trick with this and make it disappear. Um, and that plays Game Boy Advance games, and, and it's really awesome. My kids like taking this thing. I mean, look, the cartridge is almost the size of the console. So, you know, whenever we go on trips, you know, one of the girls will have the Switch, and the other one will either usually, usually have the, the Micro, or they'll take the 3DS XL and play like uh, Kingdom Hearts or something on that. So they have a lot of fun with it. Of course, the PSP is here. Uh, and the reason being is because this is the early edition bundle. Yes, I was one of the fools who paid the extra money to get mine a week early. I got one for myself and my wife, and uh, we got Uncharted with them, so I paid over 900 bucks. And now it's like, damn, what a waste. Sony, that, you months in that one. You really jacked it up. And probably one of my favorite consoles that people hate on all the time is my Yobo, and uh, I have a huge library for this thing, and this is awesome for many reasons, because it is a knockoff system, it's not, you know, an official licensed Nintendo product, but it's the Yobo, it has a controller there, you can plug your other controllers into it, uh, so it has two red controllers that plug in, so if you want to play it like 
the original Super Nintendo. It also connects to a TV, so if you want to play on a TV, it's really awesome. It has really loud speakers. This thing is just really, really awesome, and I, and I love it because uh, it allows me to do something that uh, I dreamt of as a kid, and that was take my Super Nintendo games on the go. And of course, I got the Game Gear. Who doesn't have a couple of these? The Game Gear uh, is a great piece of nostalgic hardware to let you know the reasons why Game Boy stayed on top. So, this person, I'm going to give you guys a story. It's actually on sci-fi.com. It's not science fiction. It's a science fact. I will drop a link in the description and a link to the YouTube video showing what this guy did. Sony fan crams PlayStation 2 into a switch size portable package. We can't help but wonder how much fan demand Sony might face should it ever decide to, to do its own version of its fan's generously proportioned PS2 mod, which crams the guts of the classic console into a portable package about the size of a Nintendo Switch. So, this whole thing, the PS2 is about the size of the Switch, and which that's actually a lot of work. I don't know how long it took this guy to do it, but I'm thinking of that expansive PS2 library that I have and having that in the palm of my hand, that would be really awesome. A modder and a PS2 fan who goes by the Reddit handle of Darkwing Mod is showing off the finished version of a portable project he or she has dubbed the PIS2, complete with gameplay footage that shows games like Kingdom Hearts running just fine on the homemade Tick Anywhere hybrid device. So it's a hybrid. Hmm, so I'm thinking it might be like the Switch. It looks really awesome here um, uh, in the actual footage, and it looks like it might actually be a little bit smaller uh, as far as width than the Nintendo Switch, it's probably a little bit thicker when you like lay them down side by side. Uh, in a forum post at bitbuilt.net, Darkwing Mod has been tracking the project's prog progress since 2017 and explains in great detail how the surprisingly polished looking machine was built from the guts of a PS2. The handheld runs original PS2 games without a physical disc and emulation free thanks to the Raspberry Pi 2 computing core that allows the machine to stream the games from a server. Now that, that is uh, pretty damn unique. So this guy, if you guys don't know, Raspberry Pi is something I've always wanted, but I'm not a computer nerd. It's like I had to have someone build my PC, um, and uh, he did an awesome job. Thank you so much to On Air PC up in Ohio. Uh, but I wouldn't know the first thing about it. It took me an hour and a half to change my power supply. I thought I was going to explode my PC. So I've always seen these things, Raspberry Pis, and they're really cool because of the simple fact that you could take something literally the size of a Game Boy Advance and put a computer inside of it and it'll have all the output, the ports on it and you can plug it into a monitor and plug it into a keyboard and you have a working, functioning PC. These Raspberry Pis are ridiculous, especially once you see people do with it. What people do with them, they're able to uh, create uh, video game mods and do all kinds of stuff and put, you know, emulators galore. It's it's an underpowered PC, but it works really, really well. So that guy put one of those inside this thing, and I think that it takes a lot of ingenuity and know-how to do stuff that I just don't know how to do. Continu continuing on... According to its maker, the PIS2 runs great uh, runs games at near full speed despite pulling from a server. Features support for both VGA and composite video and comes with a battery life indicator and a pair of all necessary external memory card slots, one of which doubles as a switch between portable and TV mode. So wow, this guy is awesome. Uh, these games run at almost full speed, coming from a streaming server that's connected to a Raspberry Pi, has memory cards, and is able to play on the TV. I want one of these. Um, that's really awesome. This isn't the first time a tech savvy fan has worked on a portable wonders with a PS2. Okay, so this is something that's happened before. This thing looks really awesome. And the point of this video, because it's, we're so dry out here in the gaming world for any you know, real good news, we all know that PS5 is on the horizon, right? We know that they just released Resident Evil's new co-op adventure. Oh my goodness, that looks incredible. I can't wait to play it. We know that Switch has... Uh, um, uh, the Witcher 3 on the horizon, this new Switch Portable's coming, Xbox Scarlet. It's just a plethora of gaming news, but nothing is really tangible in our hands. Uh, and this is something that exists, and, and it's something that I'm really into, and I just wanted to know what you guys think about this kind of thing. The main question I want, and I want you guys to tell me in the comments below, if you could have a portable of any console, what would it be and why? So for me, uh, I have a lot. I have a lot of stuff. And I mean, I got more portables than I got sitting on my desk here. A lot more. Um, but it, for me, because of the history I've had in gaming and, and the stuff that's available now, many, many games are available on other 
mediums and form factors right now. Like you could play plenty of Nintendo games on your on your Switch or on your 3DS. It's easy to have. Uh, you can play Super Nintendo games the same way. Um, now you can play a lot of Sega Genesis games on the Switch. Sonic and stuff are available. But there is a console that's never taken that leap, uh, at least to my knowledge, and that would be the Sega Dreamcast. If I could have, ooh, a Sega Dreamcast, it's still beautiful. I see you back there peeking at me. Sega Dreamcast in a, in a portable form factor uh, that somehow was able to incorporate the actual control designs, the VMU unit somehow, because I still have mine, uh, and, and just feel right and maybe not have CDs, but you know maybe cartridges or, or cartridges or downloads and be an official Sega product. I would go back and play, you know, Marvel's Capcom 2, Seaman. I, I would get into it. Uh, they had some incredible RPGs on that console that I think would still, you know, have a great life. I would play the old football stuff. Uh, in, uh, NFL 2K. I think it was the first one was on the Dreamcast. And it looks like Tetris now if you look at it. But back in those days, I remember I was inside uh, a mall down here. And I was walking by the game room and they had it on the TV. And at first, I, it struck me. I was like, is that a real game? And it was actually the Dreamcast. Dreamcast is really, really awesome. It's very powerful. People are still, a friend of mine actually, uh, is making a game for it now because they don't want the Dreamcast to ever die. So if it was up to me, it would probably be the Dreamcast. I want to know in the comments below which console would be your console of choice. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this Super Nintendo Portable. What would you pay for it? I'm actually going to look into seeing if they're going to do anything with this as far as producing them. It'll probably be a couple hundred dollars to have someone build me one, but it might be worth it. Um, but then again, it's streaming. It's streaming from a server somewhere, and I don't have any control over that. So, X-Day on the portable Super Nintendo, I mean, portable PS2. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button to show support for my channel. Hit the notification bell and subscribe if you have not. I am back. I think it's pretty evident. Be looking for a new Nova Knows Best in the coming days, and we'll keep you guys posted on all relevant gaming news like the cross button. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.